Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange, and we are carrying on with the frigates. So, we're on the Carillion now, and a lot of people will know about this one because I complain about it quite a bit. Well, the C-type anyway. Uh, so yeah, first off you have the Carillion Recon Frigate. If you're in P1, P2 and you don't have the special type yet, in a pinch the Recon type can be used on your front line as a pseudo evasion tank it's nowhere near as capable as the special type however it can be used to do so you go into your propulsion systems pick up the increased evasion mod here and the strategy you can then move over to the armor system picking up the increased ship hp and then i'd recommend the energy resistances here uh, again though newer servers you may want to go for the physical resistances first before picking up uh, the energy resistance in later servers swapping those two out as you'll be facing more energy uh, weaponry then it kind of all goes downhill a little bit for it because it really hasn't got any damage or potential or anything like that so going into the weapon system we can see here it's only got a 35 damage per hit so your best bet really here is to pick up the hit rate and then as much of these cooldowns as possibly fit you can potentially pick up four there giving you your hit rate and four cooldowns which is what i'd probably run on this um it works it does the job uh, again it's got an air defense cannon as well again picking up the triple hit rate uh here and then one of the cooldowns is probably the way to go again it's cannons, so they don't really do AA, which is a bit of a shame. And again, like I said, for the main weapon system, they really... It, it's not going to kill anything, or very unlikely to kill anything anyway. That is one use of the recon. The other use of the recon is in its actual role. Use it as a recon type, which just means pick up all of the cruising speed and the cruising warp speed that you've got here, and your second warp speed by 5%, and basically follow what I said for the weapons and armor. Uh, you can also pick up the strategy here or the evasion, probably pick up the uh, base evasion increase as opposed to the one that only works once per battle. Uh, but generally you won't be trying to get into fights with this as you'll be running it one ship in the fleet just to give yourself warp points and stuff around. So increasing its movement and cruising speed as high as possible is um, what you really wanna be doing with it. We then come to the heavy cannon type. Now, I've personally never really run this one, and it's due to the fact that, okay, its cannon has got, like, not a bad damage per hit, uh, and this gets buffed up. You can get that to 330 uh, damage per hit just by weapon upgrade, and then you can get additional damage increases in here. It's got, you know, a five-second lock on. It fires twice. So it's not terrible but at the same time it loses its ability to actually evade stuff pretty heavily so it does come with the enhanced vector engine so you do get a base 35 percent but as you can see here we only have two slots and you don't get any of the evasion bonuses whatsoever which meaning this thing will die pretty rapidly uh although it is mid row which does help it a little bit but it would have been nicer to see at least one evasion on here so you can get an extra 10 percent evasion bring it to 45 percent would have helped it out quite a bit armor system it loses the energy as well so you're going to pick up the double hp here and one of the physicals and then i recommend moving over to the main cannon system where you'll be picking up either a hit rate against the frigates and destroyers by 39 percent and picking up cooldowns uh, the extra hit rate as well is going to help you out here and then finishing off with the uh, all cannon damage or in a pinch you can use it to try and target large uh, things like cruisers and battle cruisers 400 ish damage if you take the damage bonuses on here so it's got you know the potential to deal some damage but bear in mind that they have pretty high armor on cruisers you're looking around 80 armor with them upgraded and some are like the lower ones uh, which means that quite a bit of the damage is going to get mitigated from these however they have got a nice strategy that does increase the damage by additional 60 percent and attack duration by 30 percent which is going to help out 
dealing with cruisers and actually being able to apply damage. So the second setup for this cannon really is anti-large, where you're going to be taking, uh, you'll be ignoring the hit rate against the frigate's destroyers. You'll be picking up the base uh, hit rate, which is just a standard hit rate against everything. Picking up the prioritized heavy targets, picking up the heavy ammo, picking up both of the damage increases here uh, is what I recommend and that brings you to five so you have one more slot for cooldown potentially here or if you do want it and you are facing like a mixer of fleets you can pick up the hit rate against frigates destroyers so it potentially deals with those a little bit better and gives you a bit more accuracy throughout the uh, board against enemies again cruisers though the hit rate's nice here because uh, this does, I think, class as a railgun or like one of the heavy cannons at least, which means its base hit rate's pretty abysmal to be fair. Uh, so picking up the hit rate's like a must, even against cruisers. Battle cruiser and above though, you'll have um, no problem with it, although you are going to be missing out on the main heavy ammo strategy if you are going that route. So that's it for the heavy cannon pretty much. Uh, it has got an air defense here as well, I should say. Again, it's the same as the base one. Pick up the triple hit rate and pick up the cooldown. Uh, it's going to be your best bet there. Now, the special type. This is the one that everyone loves to hate because it is uh, absurd the amount of... Um, dodge rate this thing gets so it's going to be on your front line it's obviously got its base dodge rate uh within the enhanced here the increased ship evasion by 35 percent you can then move over to the information warfare system pick up its strategy um or i'd actually suggest picking up the visual signal camouflage first which will give it a basically a 15 percent on top of that 35 percent chance to dodge uh, direct fire weapons being on the front line. Direct fire weapons are what's going to be targeting this thing. You can pick up the strategy a little bit later on because you can then move over to the warning system where you can then pick up a further 15% chance to dodge uh, direct fire and then a 25% chance to dodge slow weapons. Slow weapons are things like the rail guns, heavy cannons, that kind of stuff. Um, I think also some of the ions count in the slow weapons, but I need to be uh, I need to test that a little bit more. You have the potential here to uh, take the reduced target selection time, but the damage this thing dishes out is just minimal or bearable maybe at best. Uh, so I would ignore that for the most part. After picking up everything in the warning system, I'd recommend coming back and then picking up the strategy that is in the information jamming system. You can then come down to the armor system, picking up both of the ship HP. This is just gonna help increase its longevity when it is getting hit, if it ever gets hit. And then again, you can either pick up the energy resistance here or the physical resistance here. I've gone uh, physical resistance here. I'd probably recommend the energy resistance, to be honest with you. It's a little bit more TP uh, intensive, but at the end of the day, it's going to give you a 10% flat, well, 10% damage reduction if it gets hit by ions and stuff like that, um, instead of just an extra three damage reduction or damage mitigation from uh, other weapon types. You can then move over. I personally like picking up the... Um, anti-aircraft on this thing first before I pick up its weapon and that's because it has uh, the nearby row strategy on it which it doesn't do much but it's like an extra benefit to it that it can and it has been hitting some of the aircraft a little bit that are in the row which means you know you're getting the extra little bit of damage going there which is really quite nice because that might be enough to finish off an aircraft or something get it out of there especially if they're running like the likes of series and stuff where there's the potential of these aircraft being healed or even solar whales that can also heal on rtb uh so pick up the uh anti-aircraft support first is what i recommend here then picking up the double hit rate then the cooldown and then you finally move over to its main weapon system uh, where you'll be picking up the increased all cannon hit rate by 10% and then probably the cooldown and then finishing off with the double damage here um, or potentially swapping one of those damages out for cooldown. It's a bit 
difficult really. I picked up the extra uh, damage there just to bring it up a little bit higher. Uh, but you could argue that the extra four damage there, bringing that down to about 38 with the cooldown and then I haven't actually upgraded the weapon system, I never do. Uh, bringing it up another 30% probably makes more sense uh so having double cooldown instead of double uh damage is probably better here but like i said i never upgrade the weapon system on it so i just wanted to get a little bit extra damage so it has the potential to actually damage maybe some base uh cruisers or something of that nature so there is how i set up my special carillion uh there is other options in uh in the information jamming system and that's the reduce uh, the chance of being hit by guided weapons by four percent the argument for that is when it retreats to mid row it can then be targeted by guided weapons such as uh, missiles and torpedoes which means that this might help keep it around a little bit longer but genuinely i think the direct fire is the the better pick uh, personally so there you go that is the uh carillion uh done and dusted with uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of hate in the comments about this thing because it is ridiculous. There, there normally is anyway when I talk about special Carillions. So, have a good one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.